All right, so there's a lot to unpack here because there's always so much drama surrounding these teams, or this team in particular. There's two pieces to what Magic said. Let's start with the notion that the Pelicans didn't operate in good faith. RJ, your reaction? Good faith? Are you kidding me? That, that, uh, that's a joke, right? At the end of the day, good faith, Rich Paul and the LeBron camp, quote-unquote, they orchestrated this. They put the Pelicans in a bad way. They said he wasn't going to resign, and all of a sudden he was pushed because you knew Boston couldn't do it. So this was all pushed by the kind of the lake people associated with the Lakers. Let's just say that. And so you can't put some say it's in good faith when you guys don't start this process in good faith. Good faith and business is an oxymoron. Very true. It, it does not work that way. This is an occupational hazard of being part of Showtime, the new Showtime and management for this team. They got played. They got played. They, they showed their cards, Greeny, and they got played. Del Demps, a guy that not a lot of people in the league know about, really took advantage of the situation with Anthony Davis, and they won the game. And, and not, not a lot of people would go down the line and say Del Demps is this high-level executive. That's part of the reason why they're in this position. So when all of a sudden you have Magic Johnson, who has no experience in this, Rob Palinka, who has very little experience in managing a team, and you have no assistant GM, right, that's ever done this before. It's kind of like a young coach with a veteran. They just didn't know what they were doing. Maybe LeBron is the assistant GM. But he that's is. A different <laughs> conversation. Uh, the one thing I will say is that the, Hornet, the uh, Pelicans didn't win this yet. Let's wait and see what they wind up getting for Anthony Davis. If they wind up getting any more than what the Lakers were offering them, then okay, they will have won this. But I'm still not 100% convinced they will wind up with an offer on the table better than what at least was reported the Lakers were willing to give them. I mean, you still have potentially have Boston in the play this right. offseason. You still have a year and a half to wait it out. There'll right, be other options. Let's see how long they wait it out. Now let's go back to the other part of that. I'm upset that Magic Johnson said what he said yesterday about how the young players, this is just business and all that, because I meant to say it last week, and I never got around to it, and then I would have said it before he said it. I think he's 100% right. Says, as long as this game has been going on, players are involved in trade rumors. Somehow it's only with the Lakers that we decided this was a catastrophe and these young guys would never get past it. Anyone well, disagree? Well, no, it, it was a, a catastrophe from the way it was handled. That's by, what we're talking by, by the Lakers, to me personally, when you push this story, or when you push this situation and obviously they were trying to get AD to the Lakers whether it was Rich Paul uh, LeBron James the Laker organization they tried to force something that wasn't necessarily unfair and at the end of the day when you really really look at this you just can't operate like that to young players when you tell them that, that you want to put their jersey in the Raptors and then a year later you're trying to trade them. Greeny 99% of times I would agree with you but we are talking about LeBron James and the Lakers we're talking about a team that gets talked about every single day and dissected in every manner via social media TV TV, whatever it is. So for a lot of these young kids, yeah, it's easy to say, hey, look, we're all grown men. They didn't have to deal with that stuff back in the day. This is a different generation, yeah. for better or for worse. Yeah. And every day, what's the first thing people do when they get out of bed? Check on their phone. Look at their phone. Like, that stuff seeps into your mind. And still, the, 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 the sensitivity you have being on the trading blocks is something that's very difficult to deal with. Yeah. I get that. I'm not suggesting it isn't difficult to yeah. deal with. What I am saying is this notion that somehow it would fracture them irreparably and the players themselves would be damaged or the team could never but Greeny, respond to it, it. That never seemed to make prime sense. Prime example, on the NBA All-Star Draft Show, when Charles Barkley and those guys were joking with Lil Brown, like, hey, just trade everybody in your team, Giannis, to get Anthony Davis. Like, and he laughs at it. If you're a player at home and you see that, how does that not affect you? Yeah. How does that not affect you? How do you not bring your personal stuff into your workplace? And it's funny when Magic Johnson's never been traded before and never been mentioned in root trade rumors, but he wants to talk. It is a part of the league, but the organization didn't handle it right, and that's where it starts at the top. All right, one way or another, we will continue with these conversations. You know who's joining us. Kevin Durant, one hour from now, will be live here on Get Up. We're looking forward to that. We'll ask him about mm -mm. a big night last night. We'll ask him about his impending free agency and a new show starring the gentleman sitting to my right. Named Jay Williams, all that and more when KD joins us on Get Up. 